We live in an interconnected world. We are surrounded by networks and rely on them every single day. Power Grid is a gigantic network of generators, transmission lines, and consumers. Internet is an even larger one connecting billions of computers and cell phones around the globe. And those physical networks are not the only ones that matter. Virtual networks can be at least equally important. After all, we all use Facebook and Twitter every day. We are also highly interconnected inside ourselves. Our memory, personality, emotion are encoded in the connection of hundreds of billions of neurons. The gene network inside our cells constantly regulates itself to keep us alive. One thing those networks has in common, they are all complex and equipped with fascinating structures. Complex networks are fascinating, but the synchronization process happening on top of them can be even more so. Every June, fireflies in the Great Smoky Mountain Natural Park would put up this gorgeous show by fl flashing synchronously with each other to attract mates. So many people wanted to see this. The park even had to set up a lottery for it. Yet, synchronization is not always guaranteed. The generators in the power grid need to synchronize their rotational frequency to, in order for the whole system to stay functional. Otherwise, catastrophic blackouts would follow, and half the nation could be left stumbling in the darkness. Here is an interesting video showing the synchronization of metronome. You can even hear the difference, right? So I'm a graduate student in physics studying the synchronization on complex networks. There are two main factors determining how easily a system can be synchronized. First is the underlying network structure, which controls how nodes interact and communicate with each other. The other, of course, is the dynamics of the node itself, which can be highly nonlinear and even chaotic. We can draw an analogy with synchronized diving or synchronized swimming, where the, where the capability of each athlete matters, but the understanding and coordination between partners and teammates are also indispensable. Over the years, researchers in my field has gradually established the belief that homogeneity is the key to synchronization. They believe homogeneous networks are better than heterogeneous networks so the underlying rationale behind this is this. Synchronization at its core is a process of nodes exchanging information with each other in order to reach global consensus. So to achieve the optimal efficiency, the information flow should somehow be balanced. Homogeneous networks surely provide a more balanced structure than heterogeneous networks. They also believe homogeneous units are better than heterogeneous units. This is even more obvious. Just imagine what would happen if we tried to synchronize mechanical metronomes with electronic ones in that video. But that cannot be a whole story, right? Things always get better when they become similar. That's at least boring. The theme of my research is to uncover the hidden richness of synchronization phenomenon. People believe homogeneity is the key to synchronization. Then let me design systems that can only synchronize when they become heterogeneous. This might sound paradoxical at first, especially for heterogeneous units. But after all, diversity could be so advantageous in society and daily life. Why not in synchronization? As it turns out, there are a whole class of those kind of systems 
and they even have relevance to real-world constructions such as power grids. I want to end with two of my favorite pictures from Asher. His painting is always full of intriguing paradoxes. It might sound strange, but I do believe our world flourishes on paradoxes. They not only provide fundamental insight to all those real world phenomena, but also make things much more fun. Just like the paradox of heterogeneity gives us fundamental insight to the phenomena of synchronization, I hope everyone can find their favorite and the most inspirational paradox. Thank you. <laughs>